Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Uh, we've got a Cintiq Companion 2 here that we're going to be doing some upgrades on. Uh, we want to put some more RAM in this and expand the storage. It's got 128 gigs in it at the moment. We're going to take it up to 256. Um, so firstly, to get this open, we've got to take these black panels off and then we're going to find some screws that are going to give us access. The catch is, these black parts are taped down as well as clipped in. So I'm expecting to, this to put up a fight. So, um, well, yeah, let's just dig into it. So I'm going to be using my prying tools here. You can apparently get into this thing with screwdrivers, but I wouldn't recommend it. The teardown pictures that I was looking at, the dude was using a screwdriver. How he got into it with a screwdriver, I don't know. There we go, I've just, whoops, a bit too deep there. I've just managed to get in with one of my prying tools. So now I'm gonna get my other prying tools and we're just gonna start putting these in, in various places, just to start getting some pressure on this thing. Let's just adjust this so I can hang off the edge a bit. Just looking for places where I can get the prying tool under the panel. And if I'm not getting anywhere, I'm backing out and moving to a different spot and trying again. There we go. All right, so I'm starting to pry against the tape now, so we're making progress. And I think we're going to get the, the other prying tools out for this as well. It's the old iPad repair kit. Lots and lots of guitar picks. So I can put these guitar picks in place to hold things open so I don't lose any progress when I remove my prying tools. Right, now we've got a big gap we'll put in a bigger guitar pick. Right, I'm just gonna check my reference pictures just to check if there's anything delicate directly under here. Okay, so around the immediate edge, around here, we have a ledge that we can pry against. However, here and here, we have wireless antennas. And then in the middle bit, we have the battery. So I can pry these upwards as long as I stay near the edges. Thing's brutal. You can see where I'm really having to press in and getting nowhere here. So, my technique here is I'm just very slowly stepping along and prying up the clips and we pry a little bit up at the front then we push we pry a little bit up at the front then we push the prying tool deeper in and pry the interior up so we go we get the edge up and then we push the middle bit up and that's just very slowly releasing all of that tape that is under here so pry up from the front then push in and pry up at the back There we go, I think that's all the tape. Let's see if we can pull that off. Phew, all right, damage report. Cool. So you can see all that tape that I just had to fight against. What a palaver. The good news is it looks like we've done zero damage. That's all good. So this thing's a little bent, but that'll go back on, that'll be fine. Okay, now we have to repeat that exercise for these two fellas as well. Ooh, there we go, okay. We broke a clip on that one. That's not the end of the world. 
These clips are, to be honest, doing nothing to hold this on. It's all that tape that's doing it. And we can reactivate this tape with a little bit of heat. So I'm not too worried about breaking a couple of plastic clips here. That is not going to affect the reassembly of the, of the device. We'll try and avoid it, but easier said than done. There we go. That one came off cleanly. So the trick is, is to go in from the end. So I pried up a corner and then thrust straight under. All right, there we go. I think, theoretically, that should be the worst part of this repair over and done with now. Let's rearrange everything. Okay, so next we're gonna drill out all these screws and then that should release the back cover of the device and give us full access to the entire interior. If the guide I've been following isn't lying. Okay, screws out. Is that just gonna come off on its own? You know what, I think it is. We've got a couple of bits of tape here that we're just gonna pry those off. Okay, so I'm now gonna run my prying tool. Actually, I'm gonna use the guitar pick just so as not to damage this plastic exterior. I'm gonna run that around the outside. Yeah, that seems to want to stop there. Let's try going the other direction. Okay, we're making progress. We've just got a couple of bits that are holding on around the edges. Oh, there we go. Yep, it's it's happening. It's happening, Doc Gif. I'm just gonna give this, there we go. Giving it a little bit of a wobble as it comes off. Right, what have I left? That's fine. So these switches, these switches are all held on to the side there, so that's no problem. Bam. And there's the interior of our Cintiq. Very, very clean inside. I was expecting it to be dusty. Right, so, rest of it from here on out is dead easy. More RAM, change the SSD. Let's go and get some parts. Now, normally when fitting a new SSD or hard drive to a computer system, my general recommendation is to do a clean install of Windows and then copy all of your data from the old drive. This gives you a nice clean slate and just make sure that any other niggles on the old system just get left behind on the old drive. However, this tablet is running Windows 8.1 because the Windows 10 Wacom drivers are a little bit sketchy for it. And firstly, I don't have an installer for 8.1 because I upgrade everything to 10. And secondly, uh, this particular tablet is set up just so. You know, all the preferences are just right, all the apps are installed and so on. So what we're gonna do is a full backup of the current SSD onto a flash drive, and then we're gonna restore that backup onto the new SSD and then swap them over. So I'm doing this process with a program called Drive Snapshot. You can download a free trial of it from drivesnapshot.de. And what this is gonna do is create a full disk image on my flash drive. So I've selected all the partitions, and as you can see, that's just crunching through, creating image files on a flash drive. Now that my main backup is done, I've connected the new flash drive using an M2 to USB adapter. So this allows me to format the new SSD and restore the partitions onto it one by one. So I'm quickly doing this step by step, one partition at a time. This will create an exact carbon copy of what we have on the new flash drive. It's going to do it without using the extra space, but in a minute, once we've restored all this data, we'll go through and extend the partitions to then utilize the extra space we have on the new flash drive. Okay, so firstly, here is another eight gig module of RAM going in. Now we've got 16 gigs of RAM. Now we're gonna drop out our M2 SSD. So, screwdriver that out. Now we're back into the system booted up with the new SSD. We can open disk management and see that we have a large block of unallocated space. 
However, we can't extend C drive because there are two system partitions in the way, which disk management is unable to remove. So I'm loading a command admin prompt and starting disk part in order to delete those manually. Check out my video titled Merging and Deleting System Partitions for more information on how I do this bit. Once we've done it, we can then extend C to cover the unallocated space. And now when we view C drive in this PC, we've got a nice big block of empty free space. And now we're all done with all the software part of this. We can go ahead and put the back cover on and then we'll be finished. Okay, so we've got all of our data transferred across to our new SSD. We have confirmed that's working and we've confirmed that our 16 gigs of RAM is now working. So we're ready to put this thing back together. So this is as simple as taking the cover and putting it back on. I'm gonna start from the end with all the ports on it because we need to hook this over all of the USB connectors and stuff like that. So I'm gonna hook that over that end and just make sure it's on. And then we're going to lay it flat. And I'm just gonna sort of bring it round. And now I need to make sure that these switches are all aligned before I press everything down. So we're gonna make sure that they're all to the right, which is their normal resting position. No, it lies to the left. So if you look, you can see these bits here are to the left. So we'll move all of those to the left and then we can put those in and we'll just pinch that together. It's not quite going down, which probably means that we're not all the way over on the right. If I flip it up, you can see we've got a gap there still. So let's make sure that this end is as far in as it can go. There we go, that gap has disappeared, which now means I should be able to sort this end out. So move those to the left and pinch together. There we go, that's more like it. So now we'll just go along the top and the bottom and pinch those together. And we'll just make sure that we go no gaps. And we'll just make sure that's nice smooth lines with no bumps, which it is. All right. And now we can put in all the screws on the back. Right, all our screws are in. I'm going to check all my lines again, make sure that there's no mark, no no bumps that have appeared or anything. That all looks good. These buttons all feel really good. They're all clicking nice and satisfyingly. So I think we're now ready to put these fellas back on. So where these have been off for a couple of days, this stickiness is, this sticky tape is not very sticky anymore. So I'm now gonna use my hot air station, which you could also use a hair dryer or any kind of heat gun just to sort of reactivate that glue. So we're gonna run low temperature, 100 degrees, high airflow, And we're gonna use that just to warm up that glue again. I think we need a bit more heat actually. Let's go up to 170. You don't need that much degrees. However, because this is a hot air station for soldering, it do doesn't belt out that much actual air. A hairdryer will do this a lot more effectively. That's better, that's feeling tacky now. That should do. Put that in place, slide that in. Okay, so this kind of needs to thread slightly. There we go. And now I'm just gonna very carefully push this down. I'm just gonna guide the clips down into position just so they don't get bent or forced. That looks good, and I should just be able to press this into position now. That bit's resisting slightly. What's wrong with you? There we go. And I'm just gonna very firmly press the tape down. Right. That tape feels like it's sticking down. 
I'll come back to this tomorrow and if I can feel that that's not really stuck down, if I can hear it sort of, if I can hear a, a distinct movement there, what I'll do is I'll get a hairdryer out and I'll heat up the back of this panel just to reactivate that glue again and that should get it to stick down properly. So we're gonna rinse and repeat for these little feet now. So that one goes there, that one goes there. All right, that's now reassembled. And we'll just put the stand back on it for good measure. Which way is up? Camera is at the top, so that point is up. Because this thing is fully invertible, it doesn't really matter which way you have it round, but for the sake of storage and transport. Okay, there we go. And that's it, we're finished. So we'll now give Windows a good old service um, just to get the most out of it. Um, but past that, all of the hardware work is done. So we've got our new SSD fitted, we've got 16 gigs of RAM now, and we've transferred all of the data across from the previous SSD. And what we could also do is, using the adapter that we purchased, we could box this SSD up into an adapter and use it as an external hard drive, a high-speed external hard drive, because obviously this is gonna be substantially faster than our 128 gigabyte flash drive, because flash drives are not very fast, not compared to SSDs. So, thank you very much for watching everyone. I will see you all next time. Goodbye for now.